live from Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Cube covering Ansible Fest 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back. This is the Cube's coverage of Ansible Fest 2019 here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, really excited to be uh, at this event for the first time, getting to talk to a number of the practitioners, uh, talking to some of the executives, and uh, to, to, to give us a so slightly different angle on it. We're, we're really going to talk about uh, you know education uh, and what's happening in the space. And joining me, first time guest on the program, Carlos Casado, who, who is an associate professor at Syracuse University. Yep. Carlos, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. All right. Uh, so so uh, you know Syracuse, uh, you know the, the, the snow belt hasn't uh, hit yet for 2019. Yeah, uh, <laughs> up your neck of the woods. But um, uh, you know, t tell us a little bit about uh, you know what you do, uh, the programs you work on, and uh, then we'll get into how much uh, automation is a piece of that. Okay, so I'm a professor at the School of Inform Information Studies at Syracuse University, and uh, about two years ago, um, we decided to launch a new master's degree program on enterprise data systems that focuses on. Uh, cloud technologies, automation, scripting, and uh, all that's required nowadays to manage and, and work with the infrastructure that data-centric uh, enterprises need nowadays. Uh, basically, we saw this need because uh, 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 the traditional, let's say, way of working with infrastructure from the command line interface um, wasn't going to cut it anymore. Uh, uh, you need to work at scale, you need new concepts, APIs, Git, uh, containerization, virtualization. Yeah. So we need to create a program that replaced our traditional networking program and modernized it and bring it up to speed with what's well, currently happening in the industry. I, I, I think that's great. You know, we, we talk about, you know, what is the, you know, how do we close the gap between what you know, business needs, what skill sets are needed and what's coming out of university. You know, for, for a long time it was like, okay, let's get everybody in computer sciences and do that, but you know, the, whatever programming language you learn today, it's like, oh boy, it seems to change uh, and be out of date there. Uh, and you know, if you talk about a master's degree, um, in, in IT we're, we're working with, you know, how does the technology and the business, how do they work together? Yeah. Um, so I, I have to imagine that this, you know, that master's level helps prepare uh, your, your, your students to kind of live in that world. Yes, um, we're, we're a bit different than what you would call a traditional um, uh, network engineering degree, yeah. which focuses a lot on the technology. Uh, we, we embed or uh, try to you know, give our students also a business perspective, so they learn uh, management, uh, uh, information management or management uh, concepts for information professionals, uh, information policy concepts, so they understand the business side, but then we also you know, embed a lot of uh, technology uh, uh, components into the curriculum. So the idea is to have this kind of uh, multidisciplinary hybrid professional that understands that whatever is being worked at the infrastructure level needs to support the goals of the business and, and can you know, walk those worlds, be, be a good participant in teams. Yeah. That's everything. Uh, collaboration is the key nowadays, yeah. as we've seen so, in, in, in this. So, uh, Carlos, what, what prerequisites do, do your students have to have coming in? I mean, do they need to be certified on certain network gear? Or, you know, uh, what, what do they need to understand and what, uh, what, what do you give them that might be different than what they would have gotten out in industry? Well, um, preferably, Students that come in uh, should have some knowledge of networking, the TCP IP stack, basically, you know, what routing and IP address is. And from there on, they'll see courses on advanced networking, uh, scripting, cloud management, cloud architecture, and so forth, to, you know, and, and plus the business side, as I mentioned, uh, to get them prepared uh, for, for the real world. Okay, yeah. uh, w one of the things that was, you know, greatly talked about here is really that evolution of, of automation. Uh, you know, how do we move it from being a, just, you know, tactical, uh, one of the keynote speakers yesterday talked about, you know, it's the, the, the whack-a-mole, I'm going to solve all of these little problems to a more strategic view. Yeah. Uh, how, how have you been seeing, and uh, how, how does the evolution of automation uh, impact your curriculum? Well, uh, th th that's a great question. So, so, so the idea is not to have automation for the sake of automation. Uh, like I said, we, we need a business focus uh, and whoever is participating in a team and moving the uh, automation story forward needs to be uh, conscious that uh, the end goal is to support the business. However, in terms of how it has impacted our curriculum, uh, we embedded automation in several of our courses because um, th that's the way to go in the future. You, you, you can't just cut it with you know, a, a device by device uh, kind of approach. So uh, it, everything 
nowadays changes too quickly and the demands for businesses to respond to these changes are, are, you know, require a, a quick turnaround for whatever the infrastructure needs to provide to support the business. So, so we need to build professionals that understand this and can apply innovation to their benefit and to the benefit of, of their enterprise. Yeah, uh, okay. one, one of the interesting conversations we've had this week is that the, the, the software, the technology is actually helping to drive uh, some of the collaboration and communication between groups and yeah. roles. Um, you know, how much of that does, get, does that get touched on at all uh, you know, when you talk about working with the business and, and yes. doing all so, that? So. so we're kind of big on team-based uh, assignments and labs just to get students to understand they're going to have to be part of a team. And you, you might have people that speak a different language than you or are at a different level uh, uh, than you, are, let's say, more business oriented, more process oriented, more technology oriented, but you have to be, well, at least the professionals we're preparing, have to be that glue that keeps the team cohesive and, and, and working together to, to a common goal. So, so yeah, collaboration is key. Um, we, we've seen that in this event that it's, it's all about changing the culture and, 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 and having this um, let's say positive approach towards being collaborative. And w we're hoping that we're building professionals that from day one understand this and can be part of a team. All right, um, so you, you, you talk about uh, that, that collaboration. I'm, I'm curious, in higher education, you know, how, how, how is what you're doing impacting your peers? How do you learn uh, from both your peers in education as well as in industry? Well, so at least you know, at our university, we, we have um, a culture of collaboration between uh, different uh, departments and, and disciplines. So I work a lot with engineering, we might work a lot with the business school, law school. So again, to bring this interdisciplinary uh, uh, knowledge to students. We also like to reach out to, uh, to industry and, and build partnerships, build bridges so that um, we can leverage some of the resources they have either to well, promote or educate people on their products, but also to get students to actually be very hands-on and work with um, things that are out there in the real world. So, so the idea is that um, they can speak the same language as many professionals that are, that are already out there. Yeah, and can, can you speak to uh, you know, Red Hat's participation? How are they partnering and enabling uh, what your mission is? So I've been using Ansible in several of my courses, and so we have a scripting course, just to mention one, where we, we do a lot of uh, modules on Ansible, and again, uh, to understand this concept of m mass automation, uh, that automation is the key uh, element for um, moving infrastructure and, and having infrastructure deliver goals uh, in the future. So with Red Hat, we, we partner in, in such that we get uh, to use their um, uh, products in an easy way, and we keep on building new uh, bridges to use more of their products. Now with the announcement of uh, the, the automation platform, I really want to dig into that and start building new labs for, for students on, on, on that platform. Okay, so it sounds like you're excited by the announcement. Oh, Anything yeah. particular that uh, you know, caught your eye on that? It, it sounds like you know, the networking pieces with collections uh, seems like something that might be useful. Yes, so, well, being an information school, we're big on data, right? So, so now it's like you have the story of being, auto, being able to automate at the device or uh, service level, uh, putting that into uh, Ansible Tower, doing uh, access control, monitoring, and then collecting statistics uh, ba based on that, uh, monitoring the performance of, of your playbooks, monitoring the performance of your automation tasks. So, so having that data, that analytics side, for example, is quite exciting for, a, for an information school because we, we might get some ideas as to uh, how to leverage that in the future. Um, so I, I, I'm wondering if you could share kind of the, you know what your your students think about automation in general. You know, if you talk about just the general workforce, you know, over the years there's sometimes that fear. Oh, the, you know, the robots and the automations are going to take over. Uh, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, you know, is, is there any of that fear uh, from uh, the you know the generation, or does, does working with the technology you know help enable what they're looking to do? Well, it's definitely kind of a mixed bag. So. Uh, until students are, get introduced to tools like, like Ansible, they do have some uh, fear that, well, you know, now it's like uh, one person can do the work of 20 or 30 uh, people. But once they understand the story of you know, uh, tools like Ansible, um, they, 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 they change their focus. I had two students at the Ansible Fest last year, and they were amazed about uh, looking at the way that many enterprises are using automation. So it's not 
just about uh, taking out these m mundane tasks that network managers have to do, is getting the time to actually innovate, to be creative, uh, you know, Get, get rid of those tasks that you know occupy time but are not really important. Uh, they're the minimum tasks to get the ship uh, uh, moving along, but then build on top of that to create new products and new services. Yeah, it, it's interesting. If you look at the research on it, you know, information technology often has not had the efficiency increases uh, of, of kind of worker productivity that you might expect, um, and definitely not to the point that it's going to be you know massive you know job you know yeah. killing of jobs you know. Hopefully, um, you know, when we talk to some of the people here, it should improve your job satisfaction, hopefully yes, yes. get rid of some of those, you know, oh my gosh, I got to spend, you know, every fifth weekend, uh, you know, working on this and we can automate some of those away. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's that disconnect between the reality and, you know, what the technology is actually doing. Yes, yeah, you don't want to be putting fires every weekend or <laughs> every day and you, you want to bring additional value to, to the enterprise and I think that's what automation allows uh, in a big way. Great, um, so Carlos, you, you've been to Ansible Best before. Uh, give us your impressions so far, uh, the event this week, and uh, some of the key things that you, you know, have been or are looking to take away uh, from Ansible Fest 2019. Well, as I mentioned before, the uh, automation platform, definitely want to look into that. Uh, I think the, um, the, the way that people are talking about collaboration around our automation is, is very important. Uh, I think uh, that kind of validates the team-based focus and approach to some of our assignments, at, at least at the uh, program level. Um, also, uh, I, I think the, the way that companies are now telling their stories uh, of automation is pretty neat. Uh, I, I hope to bring some of them into the curriculum. Uh, I just saw one from um, these guys from New Zealand, uh, data.com, they had videos as to how they implemented some big massive um, uh, uh, automation uh, tasks. Uh, that was pretty interesting. So, so hopefully um, uh, I get to take some of uh, what I've learned here into the curriculum. Yeah, and uh, you know, just a final thing, you know, h how prevalent are these you know, curriculums of automation uh, throughout the country? Uh, you know, any data on that? Well, that, that's a good question. So basically I, I would split the universities or the programs like in three groups. So you, you have uh, one group that's developing programs most, mostly on the network engineering side, very, very technical. Uh, other group that probably hasn't really catched on on the evolution of networking and uh, probably just teaching networking in the same traditional manner, you know, uh, well, hoping to get people prepared for Cisco certifications or certifications of other type, very static, traditional, uh, uh, network instruction, and then um, our other group, uh, which we would be in, like kind of in the middle, where it's not fully about the technology; it's also about the business and how much you concentrate on both sides. Kind of uh, is where we can of distinguish uh, can dis distinguish each of these programs. So, besides us, I think there are a couple of smaller universities that are also preparing uh, these transitions. It's a hard thing to do because. Things change so quickly and it's hard for faculty to keep up uh, and we want to deliver uh, up-to-date content to students and, 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 and it, it, it's extremely difficult. Uh, my content changes by at least a third from year to year. So I have to prepare new slides, new assignments, new labs, get more infrastructure. It's very exciting but also very challenging. And so we hope that our students are built to embrace change, uh, prepare for it and not oppose it. No, I, I think that's a, it is a great mission. Uh, you know, not only does you know the technology and the business need to work close together, but uh, we know that the only constant in our industry is change. Yes. So, being Absolutely. prepared for a, as a workforce to be able to uh, you know live in that and thrive in that environment is so critically important. Carlos, uh, thank you so much for sharing with us uh, you know the curriculum at Syracuse, and uh, you know we look forward to catching up with you in the future. Thank you. All right, Thanks. we'll be back with lots more coverage. I'm Stu Miniman. John Furrier's also in the house. It's our two days live coverage here from Antibal Fest 2019 in Atlanta. Thanks for watching theCUBE.